Although SwiftUI doesn't come with any haptic functionality built in, it's easy enough for us to add using UIKit and Core Haptics, two frameworks built right into the system and available on all modern iPhones. If you haven't heard the term haptics before, it involves small motors in the device to create sensations such as taps and vibrations. UIKit has a very simple implementation of haptics, but that doesn't mean you should rule it out. It can be simple because it focuses on built-in haptics such as success or failure, which means users can come to learn how certain things feel. That is, if you trigger the success haptic, then some users, particularly those who rely on haptics more heavily, such as blind users, will be able to know the result of an operation without any further input from your app. To try out UIKit's haptics, add this method to your content view. Funk simple success. Let generator equals UI notification feedback generator. Generator dot notification occurred dot success. You can trigger that with a simple on tap gesture such as this one. On tap gesture perform simple success. Try replacing dot success with dot error or dot warning and see if you can tell the difference. Success and warning are similar but different, I think. For more advanced haptics, Apple provides us with a whole framework called Core Haptics. This thing feels like a real labor of love by the Apple team behind it. I think it was one of the real hidden gems in iOS 13. Certainly I pounced on it as soon as I saw the release notes. Core Haptics lets us create hugely customizable haptics by combining taps, continuous vibrations, parameter curves, and more. I don't want to go into too much depth here, it's a bit off topic, but I do at least want to give you an example so you can try it for yourself. First, add this new import near the top of contentview.swift. Next, we need to create an instance of ch haptic engine as a property. This is the actual object that's responsible for creating vibrations, so we've got to create it up front before we want haptic effects. So, add this to content view. At state, private var, engine, ch haptic engine, optional. We're going to create that as soon as our main view appears. When creating the engine, you can attach handlers to help resume activity if it gets stopped, such as when the app moves to the background. But here we're going to keep it simple. If the current device supports haptics, we'll start the engine and print an error if it fails. Add this to content view now. Funk, prepare haptics. Guard, ch haptic engine, dot capabilities for hardware, dot supports haptics, else return. Do self dot engine equals try ch haptic engine. Then we'll call try engine question mark dot start. And for our catch block, we'll say print. There was an error creating the engine. Error dot localize description. Now for the fun part. We can configure parameters that control how strong the haptic should be, called haptic intensity and how sharp it is, called haptic sharpness. Then put those into a haptic event with a relative time offset. Sharpness is an odd term, but it'll make more sense once you've tried it out. A sharpness value of zero really does feel dull compared to a value of one. As for the relative time, this lets us create lots of haptic events in a single sequence. Add this to content view now. Funk, complex success. First, we'll make sure the device supports haptics. Again, that's guard, ch haptics engine, dot capabilities for hardware, dot supports haptics, else return. Next, we'll make an array to store all our haptic events. We'll say var events equals an array of ch haptic event. We'll then create one intense sharp tap. We'll say let intensity equals ch haptic event parameter, parameter ID, dot haptic intensity, value one. And then let sharpness equals ch haptic event parameter, parameter ID, haptic sharpness, value one. We'll then wrap that in a ch haptic event. We'll say let event equals ch haptic event, event type haptic transient, parameters, an array of intensity and sharpness, relative time zero, and add that to our array. So a transient event here will mean a temporary event, a quick tap. And relative time zero means start immediately. We'll then convert those into a pattern and play it immediately. We'll say do let pattern equals 
try, ch haptic pattern, events events, parameters an empty array. Let player equals try, engine question mark, make player with pattern. Try player question mark dot start at time zero. And for our catch block, we'll print fail to play pattern, error dot localize description. To try out our custom haptics, modify the body property of content view to this. Dot on appear, perform, prepare haptics. Dot on tap gesture, perform, complex success. And that makes sure the haptic system is started early so the tap gesture works correctly. If you want to experiment with haptics further, try replacing the let intensity, let sharpness, and let event lines with whatever haptics you want. For example, if you replace those three lines with the following code, you'll get several taps of increasing, then decreasing intensity and sharpness. For I in, stride, from 0, to 1, by 0.1. Let intensity equals ch haptic event parameter, parameter ID, haptic intensity, value, float of I. Let sharpness equals ch haptic event parameter, Parameter ID, haptic sharpness, value, float of I. Let event equals ch haptic event, event type, haptic transient, parameters, array of intensity and sharpness, relative time I, and events that append event. I'll then copy and paste that loop directly below. I'll do float one minus i here and here, so it goes the other way afterwards. And then do relative time one plus i. Give that a try. See what you think. 